Hi, I'm Nomi Prince. I hold a PhD in International Political Economy. I was formerly a Managing Director at Goldman Sachs and a Senior Managing Director at Bear Stearns. I'm the founder of macroeconomic research company Prince Sites Global. I've written seven books on the intersection of economics, finance, and politics. I've testified before the Senate Budget Committee, and I presented information about the National Infrastructure Bank to a bipartisan hearing in the House of Representatives earlier this year. I want to discuss that with you today. A National Infrastructure Bank, or NIB, has been created and successfully implemented in our nation's history four times. This financing mechanism has funded our way to growth after the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, and the Great Depression. It's been established during Republican and Democratic presidencies. The NIB model is used worldwide today to finance the development of integral, modern, and sustainable infrastructure. We are the only developed nation without a dedicated infrastructure bank to finance our national infrastructure. This must change. We must change it. Let's dig into the details. U.S. House Bill H.R. 4052 would create a $5 trillion national infrastructure bank. The NIB will be large enough to finance each state's unmet infrastructure projects without increasing taxes, the national debt, or inflation. The NIB also resolves budget-related battles in Congress by fully complementing and augmenting financing for infrastructure projects that are already partially financed through the federal budget. So where do we stand? There are 38 co-sponsors of H.R. 4052, which was introduced by Congressman Danny Davis, who represents much of Chicago. In addition, 28 state legislatures have introduced NIB resolutions, and eight have passed these resolutions in at least one chamber. Most of these successes were bipartisan. The NIB would operate under the same regulatory statutes as any other commercial bank. It would lend to or provide financing for infrastructure projects only. These are not random projects. They span 16 project categories, from energy to ports to bridges to schools, which are already monitored by the American Society of Civil Engineers. The NIB would add four additional categories to these, which include $720 billion for affordable housing, high-speed rail, broadband everywhere, and $400 billion for water projects to address drought in our critical agricultural areas. Fully implemented, the NIB would create 25 million new jobs required to pay Davis-Bacon wages. It would adhere to a Buy America agenda, elevating our supply chains and providing significant investment in low-income, urban, and rural communities. The NIB would supercharge the American economy by contributing an extra 5% to GDP annually. Again, it requires no new federal spending, no new taxes, no new debt. Its source of capital, or the seed money to launch the NIB, would be $500 billion worth of existing U.S. Treasury bonds. These are already held in private accounts and could be exchanged for preferred stock in the bank. Owners of that stock, though, would have no voting power, and that is how the bank would remain independent and true to its mission. The lending process is identical to that of any conventional commercial bank. It entails providing low interest loans at near treasury bond rates with flexible terms lasting for the project's life. This is at a time when mega Wall Street banks like Citigroup are abandoning the municipal bond market. A national infrastructure bank would unify us as a country, and we so need that. It would galvanize our nation around the common purpose of a massive upgrade that would propel our economy forward for generations. Because here is the thing. When a bridge collapses, it does not care whether it's in a red or a blue state. You cannot travel from point A to point B with half a bridge because the funding ran out. And J.P. Morgan Chase is not going to provide the financing to finish it. But a national infrastructure bank will. Thank you for listening to this information about the National Infrastructure Bank. I'm going to close with this. The American Society of Civil Engineers graded our country's infrastructure a C-. We can do better. We must do better. However, a National Infrastructure Bank is the only way that we can do better.
Thank you very much.